Hi there and welcome to this day in history for July 5th. July 5th is the 186th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 187th in leap years, with 179 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is horse sense. Horse sense is a noun that means common sense. The words themselves come to us from Old English horse and a Latin word that means sense. But why? It could have to do with some association of horses with country and the sound practical judgment exhibited by an unsophisticated country person. Or it could have to do with the horse's sense of staying out of trouble. Yet another idea has to do with Jonathan Swift's satire, Gulliver's Travels, wherein lie a race of horses endowed with reason, contrasted with yahoos, <laughs> who were boorish humans, yahoos. <laughs> For whatever reason, the phrase evolved. The earliest documented use of the term horse sense is 1832. And with that, we're going to start on July 5th, 1687, when Isaac Newton published Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, although he named it in Latin, Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, Pardon me, my Latin is a little rusty. <laughs> I'm informed that Latin is considered a dead language for a reason. <laughs> anyway, this work is often referred to simply as the Principia. Once he got this book done, he went back, annotated, and corrected his personal copy, and ended up publishing two additional editions. He writes about Newton's laws of motion, classical mechanics, Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, and a derivation of Kepler's Laws of Planetary Motion. Now this is all very interesting, but there's another lesson in there, and that is that he went ahead and wrote the book, he got it published, and then he went back through it, made notes, corrections, had it republished. Twice. He ended up with three books, whereas too many perfectionist authors keep working and working and working and never get even one published. Just do it, just get it done. Sometimes you just have to go with what you have. <laughs> On July 5th, 1775, the Second Continental Congress adopted a document called the Olive Branch Petition. This was a final attempt to avoid war between the 13 colonies in Great Britain Unfortunately, King George wasn't having it. <laughs> he wouldn't even read the document. Instead, he simply declared the colonists traitors. This is the birthday of American businessman P.T. Barnum, co-founder of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. <laughs> he was born on July 5, 1810 and lived to the age of 80. Interestingly, in addition to his career as a showman and entrepreneur, he was also a politician, serving in the Connecticut House of Representatives for three years, before then being elected mayor of Bridgeport, Connecticut in 1875. He was only in office as mayor for a year, but while he was there, he worked to improve the water supply, bring gas lamps to the streets, and enforce liquor and prostitution laws, and was instrumental in starting the Bridgeport Hospital. Philadelphia's Liberty Bell took a trip on July 5, 1915. On this day, it left on a special train on its way to the Panama Pacific International Exposition. You know it's got a crack in it anyway, so that must have been a real nail biter. The upshot is that the Bell's custodians decided that's it, no more trips for the Liberty Bell. <laughs> she could stay home now. And we spoke the other day of a person named Jamie Farr, who's best known for playing a character on the TV show, MASH, named Maxwell Q. Klinger. So you can imagine my surprise in finding that there was actually an individual named Max Klinger. Mm -hmm. Today's Max Klinger was a German symbolist, painter, sculptor, printmaker, and writer, born in 1857. He comes to our attention today because it was on July 5, 1920 that the artist Max Klinger passed away at the age of 63. 
Hormel Foods Corporation introduced a product called Spam on July 5th, 1937. Now Spam gets a lot of grief for various reasons, but is, as I recall, fairly tasty. It's composed of pork with ham and a few other ingredients cooked in the can. Word has it that it was invented to increase the sales of pork shoulder, which was not that popular a cut. Wikipedia says that Hormel claims only a small circle of former Hormel executives actually know the meaning of the word spam, but popular beliefs are that it stands for spiced ham. That works for me. <laughs> As it turns out, back in World War II, it was difficult to deliver fresh meat to the front, but they sure could get spam and over 150 million pounds of spam were purchased by the military before war's end. Wartime rationing also put a pretty hard squeeze on a lot of people, but they could get spam. Margaret Thatcher called it a wartime delicacy. Nikita Khrushchev said that without spam, they wouldn't have been able to feed their army. My research tells me that spam is very popular in Hawaii where spam dishes are available in restaurants and they have a Spam-themed festival. Mm -hmm. If I have any viewers in Hawaii, let me know in the comments about this. It is a popular item selling all over the world except for the Middle East and North Africa where it's forbidden for being a pork food product. On July 5th, 1947, a young woman named Micheline Bernardini modeled the first modern bikini at a swimming pool in Paris. <laughs> The designer, Louis Riard, could not find a runway model willing to showcase this revolutionary new design, which revealed the wearer's navel and much of her buttocks. Risqué for its time, he hired a nude dancer to model the garment. The National Health Services Act created the National Public Health System in the United Kingdom on July 5, 1948. BBC broadcast its first television news bulletin on July 5, 1954. Meanwhile, in America, Elvis Presley recorded his first single, That's All Right, at Sun Records in Memphis, Tennessee on July 5, 1954. That's all right, baby. This is the birthday of American singer, songwriter, and keyboard player Mark Cohn, born July 5, 1959. I've linked his song, Walking in Memphis, in the show notes for you. Still gives me goosebumps, even just talking about it. <laughs> Mark Cohn, happy birthday, dude. This is the birthday of American actress Edie Falco, born July 5, 1963. She has a significant filmography. I particularly remember as Carmela Soprano from the HBO series, The Sopranos. My goodness, even YouTube CEOs have birthdays. And this is the birthday of YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki, born July 5th, 1968. She was involved in the founding of Google and proposed Google's acquisition of YouTube in 2006 and has served as CEO of YouTube since 2014. On July 5th, 1971, the 26th Amendment to the United States Constitution Lowering the voting age from 21 to 18 years was certified by President Richard Nixon. Arthur Ashe became the first black man to win the Wimbledon singles title on July 5, 1975. On July 5, 1980, Swedish tennis player Bjorn Borg won his fifth Wimbledon final and became the first male tennis player to win the championships five times in a row from 1976 to 1980. Armenia adopted its constitution on July 5, 1995, four years after its independence from the Soviet Union. Dolly the sheep became the first mammal cloned from an adult cell on July 5, 1996. She had three mothers. One provided the egg, another provided the DNA, and yet a third carried the cloned embryo to term. I don't know that their scientific curiosity has been quelled quite yet, but one thing I did learn was that making cloned animals is highly inefficient. Out of 277 attempts, Dolly was the only lamb that survived to adulthood. The leader of the team that created Dolly said in 2007 that 
the nuclear transferal technique may never be sufficiently efficient for use in humans, which is fine with me. <laughs> Baseball great Ted Williams played his entire playing career for the Boston Red Sox. After retiring as a player, he served as manager for the Washington Senators slash Texas Rangers. And I have a Ted Williams story. <laughs> We got to go see the Cleveland Indians at Texas Rangers and through a fortuitous sequence of events ended up in some very nice box seats along the third baseline. We noticed Ted Williams a couple of boxes left and in front of us. We totally knew who he was but we were way too starstruck to try to go talk to him. And now our attention was divided between watching the baseball game and watching Ted Williams. <laughs> We observed a young man make his way down to the box with a jersey, he had a Rangers jersey and a Sharpie pen. He was looking for Ted Williams' autograph. We didn't hear the conversation, but we watched as Ted Williams sent the young man away, and in a little bit, the young man returned with a Red Sox jersey, which Ted Williams did autograph. <laughs> it was shortly after that that we moved to Cooperstown, and I got the job at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum which is where I was on July 5th, 2002, when the announcement came out that Ted Williams had passed away. He was 83. Today's song is Coming Up by Paul McCartney, number one on July 5th, 1980. I didn't quite remember this one until I listened to it as my hat was pretty full in 1980, being the mommy of a small young family. But this is a fast, fun, cheerful song coming up. I was able to find the official music video for this one. And look, all the male characters in this video were played by Paul McCartney himself. Some of them is pretty well disguised. Love the Buddy Holly character. The lady in this video is his lovely late wife, Linda. Coming up by Paul McCartney, number one, July 5th, 1980. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that is called no really <laughs> you can also find me on rumble parlor bitshoot and gitter all those links in that description Alrighty, that's all i can think of right now thanks again and i'll see you next time